Welcome back. This is Kamal once again with yet another very interesting trigonometric integral. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus sine to the 4th power of x plus cosine to the 4th power of x. So, yeah. The quartic, uh, the quartic powers of trigonometric functions are quite enticing indeed. But we can solve this using some nice old school solution developments. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, we're just going to manhandle our way through some trigonometry. So what I want to do here is expand the, den the denominator by zero. And the very special version of zero I'm going to use is, let me tell you, we have the integral from zero to pi by two of dx divided by one plus sine to the fourth power of x plus cosine to the fourth power of x plus our version of zero is two times sine square x cosine square x minus, wait terribly sorry about that, 2 sine square x cosine square x. And how on earth is this thing even useful? Well, notice for a fact that I can just collect these terms here as sine square x plus cosine square x squared, which we know equals 1 squared, which is, of course, 1. And this implies that the integral i is now the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by, we have 1 plus 1 in the denominator, so that's 2 minus 2 times sine square x times cosine square x. And sine times cosine is a pretty, it's a pretty nice expression because it's related to the double angle formula for the sine function. So let me just expand by 2 upstairs and downstairs. So that means we have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 4, sorry about that, pi by 2, of dx divided by 4 minus 4 times sine square x times cosine square x. And we know that sine x cosine x times 2 equals sine 2x. So what we have in the denominator is just sine squared 2x. So this implies that the integral i equals twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 4 minus sine squared 2x. What we could do now is introduce a substitution whereby we let 2x equal theta, which implies on differentiation that dx equals d theta by 2. And as x approaches 0, obviously we have theta approaching 0. And as x approaches pi by 2, we have theta approaching 2 pi. So this means the target integral i is now twice the integral from 0 to pi of d theta, terribly sorry about that, d theta divided by 2. And we have some nice cancellation taking place, meaning that we now have just 4 minus sine squared theta left in the denominator. And that is pretty cool. The integrand is a function of sine theta. And we're integrating from 0 to pi. So let me just draw the graph of sine theta real quick from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi. And notice that there's, there's this really nice symmetry about the line theta equal to pi by 2, which is pretty good because that means we don't have to integrate from 0 to pi. We could just integrate from 0 to pi by 2 and double the result. So i here equals twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of d theta divided by 4 minus sine square theta. And sine square theta is cool and all. I mean, the sine function is a nice function. It has its utilities. But I like to see word cosine functions instead. Why is that so? Well, they're easier to, you know, the subsequent expansions are much easier. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, we perform a phase shift going from the theta to the pi by 2 minus theta realm, which means that we have i now equal to twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of d theta, again terribly sorry about that, I only recently started using the theta variable, and we have 4 minus cosine square theta now. And what I want to do is expand using 1. And the very special version of 1 I want to use now 
is the squared secant function. So I have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 1 by 4 minus cosine squared theta, and the version of 1 I'm going to invoke right now, is secant squared theta divided by secant squared theta. And this is pretty convenient because now you have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of secant squared theta d theta divided by 4 times secant squared theta minus 1. And we can expand the squared secant function as 1 plus d squared tangent function. So this implies that we have i equal to twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of secant squared theta d theta divided by 4 minus 1 is 3, so we have 3 plus 4 times the squared tangent of theta. Now we have a very straightforward substitution to make. We're going to let tangent theta equal to z, which implies that secant squared theta d theta equals dz. And as theta approaches 0, we have tangent 0, which is, of course, 0. And as theta approaches pi by 2, we have z approaching infinity. Okay, cool. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of dz divided by 3 plus 4 times z squared. And the most straightforward way, straightforward way to evaluate this integral would be using residues. So I'll leave that as a bit of homework to you guys. And I'm just going to deus ex machina this thing and write this as 2 times... What would we get after applying those residues? Uh, definitely... 2 divided by root 3, and we have the inverse tangent. Yeah, you're probably wondering how did we get the inverse tangent using residues. I'm just writing things in reverse just for, you know, fancy fancy effects and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so we have, uh, we would have 2z divided by root 3, right? And the limits are 0 and infinity. Now, as the argument approaches 0, we get 0. And as it approaches infinity, we get pi by 2. So that means we have 2 times 2 root 3 times pi by 2. Some lovely cancellation. And this implies that i here equals pi divided by 2 times root 3 after an application of residues that I have left to you guys as homework. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope, I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do remember to drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you, see you next time.